Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. And welcome to the weekly gardening vlog. Today, we're gonna to be trying to get as much done as possible, but I have no idea how much will actually get done. It is the day after Mother's Day, so I have a bunch of really cool stuff to show you. I think you're gonna be excited about it. But uh, the first thing on my list today is going to be refreshing my pots up here. I have lemon balm that is regrowing. I have yarrow that seems to be regrowing. I have some chamomile that seems to be regrowing. Uh, oregano is also making a comeback if I can keep the darn cats out of it. That's why all the forks are in there. That was one of the, that was one of the suggestions in the video that I put out last week asking for help with cats. That was one of the suge suggestions. One of the downsides to that type of method of keeping cats out is the sheer number of forks that it requires. Yes, I do need that number of forks. For some reason, the oregano in this pot, they just, they're going crazy over it. Like, they're not going crazy over it, they just really like to lay in it. So I don't know what it is about it. Anyways, okay, so, and then over there, we have uh, two chive containers that I may end up up potting. And then I have a yarrow, not yarrow, valerian root. And I also would like to up pot that and get it into a bigger pot so its roots can expand. And the one on the end of there is blank. Then over here, we have this here blank one. This is all weeds. <laughs> I don't even clue what this is. Lemon balm and this one back there is also blank. So we're gonna be doing something with that. And then some rosemary that needs to be up potted. I've had that rosemary in that pot for probably five years, I think. I have no idea why it's still alive. It, it kind of baffles me. But anyways, moving along, in the back here, you can see that we have a bunch of starts over here. I'm pretty excited about it. A lot of this is some repotting. Basically what we have here is we have a bunch of, these ones are cauliflower and broccoli. And then we have a bunch of beans. We have wicks, wicks, lime, wicks lima bean, a mayflower bean, which is like a dried bean, Chinese red noodle, slippery silks, purple potted pole beans, and an asparagus bean. With, and oh, and a greasy north pole. Then we have Copenhagen market cabbage, Nash's summer cabbage, drumhead savoy, red acre, calabose, and Brunswick. These ones are going to be replacing all the damaged ones that we have over there and uh, those ones got destroyed by slugs and cats and so we are going to be replacing them and doing some extra <laughs> of course i can't just do normal things and then here i just brought this one outside i still need to water it but these ones just started to sprout and these ones are replacing the squash down over there that the slugs and well mostly slugs destroyed the cats didn't do a whole lot but the, the slugs definitely did. <laughs> and then here we have just an entire flat, half Long Island improved Brussels sprouts, and then half Napa cabbage. All the Napa cabbage that I had over there, um, they did very, they grew very well, <laughs> but they went to seed really quick. And I think it was because it was underneath the row covers and it was too warm under there for them. So um, I planted, how many is that? I think that's 36. I planted, I think 36 of these things. So hopefully, Hopefully I can get those ones in the ground and they'll finally take off so I can make me some kimchi. And of course, bring you along for it. So then we have over here a little further, we have some nigella that is still doing great. I left these in the 128 cell holders because they were just pretty small when I was transplanting all of those. And I just didn't have the pots. I fulfilled all the empty pots I had. So we have some uh, one Gallardia lollipop and then a Gallardia Indian blanket, a Gloriosa daisy, a double tall straw flower, and a mixture straw flower. And then here we have, let me see this zinnia, the salmon rose zinnia really didn't do well. Only two of them actually took. And same thing with the red cap, only three, well four. But the zinnias didn't do that great in the germination this year. But, <clears throat> so we have some butterfly milkweed, did terribly. Oh, one, we got one. And then a showy milkweed also did worse, <laughs> zero. Um, I think I was supposed to cold stratify these, so there's that. And then we have some chicory, some white stars, feverfew, spearmint, perpia, echinacea, and sage. What's this? Some caraway. I took three of the caraways, but the one just hasn't sprouted again. And then we have some paradoxa uh, echinacea, yellow echinacea. 
we got all those ones. Three of them are pretty big, and then one of them is kind of small, just starting. Then we have Stevia, did nothing. Uh, Whorehound, I have one little, little one. And then a Globe Amaranth, got nothing. Verbena, it's doing good. Hyssop, got three for four. Uh, Swamp Milkweed, did great. I put two in each haul, and it looks like I got eight out of, or seven out of eight. And then we have some Blue Gold, Bode Gold Chamomile, and some German Chamomile. Oh, Zodden Land Chamomile, I didn't need to do that one. And then over there, we just have all the ones that we transplanted that are missing from these two trays. So, a bunch of zinnias, and what else? Zinnias, some um, calendula, um, calendula, milkweed, not milkweed, um, marigold, just a bunch of flowers. So that should be pretty cool. And then over in the far right there, we have some peppers that are doing really well, starting to condition them outside. And then of course, all of these are tomatoes. These ones I just up potted like less than a week ago. So once I did these, I have no, no more tomatoes in the small little, um, 72 cell trays so i was pretty excited about that one so we're gonna move on and i'm gonna show you something pretty freaking awesome okay yesterday was mother's day at least in real life i know you're gonna see this on friday but yesterday for me was mother's day and i might have gone to the store and without a plan and this is the result of it uh without a solid plan i was planning on just getting a couple of plants and then i saw all the prettiness and i ended up buying a terrible amount so my original plan was to get some indoor plants and I did get a couple of those, but I definitely got some that are not indoor plants. So for the indoor plants, I got this. It is, it's a Rex, but it's called a Begonia Rex. I don't, I don't know. Um, this one just looked really pretty. And I think once the leaves get bigger, um, it's gonna be beautiful. And then I got this one here, which is a red vein and it's a Fitonia Argonura. I don't know. But look at these leaves, they're just so beautiful. And then this one is pretty much the same thing, but it's more of a, like a red. It's one of a red Anne, and it's a Fetonia something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're the same plant, just different colors, but they have different colors, so I got them. And then I got, uh, I got three of the hot cayenne peppers and one jalapeno. And that is because the jalapenos and the cayenne peppers did not withstand my neglect and they all died. At least most of them. I think I have like two jalapenos left, which is not enough. So then once I got the indoor plants, I of course I had to peruse the outdoor plants and I've never, first of all, I've never had an indoor plant. So I'm kind of excited about that one. It's just never been something I've done. I've always been too neglectful as evidenced by all of my peppers that I, that I killed and almost killed. But I'm really gonna try and I really wanna have a nice pretty indoor plant, like just kind of like a, I don't know, just some indoor plants. I think it'd be nice. So, if you guys have suggestions for really, really pretty indoor plants that don't get gargantuan, even help, possibly even help with air quality, I would love to hear your guys' suggestions. Ones also that might be able to make a good recovery once they might be neglected. So, uh, we're gonna move on to the outdoor portion. I'm really excited. I got a bunch of different uh, types of lilacs that I'm so excited about. I love lilacs. I seriously, I love lilacs. I think they are the prettiest smelling things. They are beautiful. They're great for bees and I just, they're wonderful. So I got this California lilac. It's a, oh shucks, darn it. She showed me how to pronounce it li last night on the live, um, Sionthus. See on this? Oh, it shucks. She even spelled it out phonetically for me last night. I can't remember how to pronounce this. Uh, see on this. I'm going to go with that because I know it starts with a C, S, E, E. So, um, anyways, <laughs> we got this one. It's a California lilac. Super pretty. And then we got this. It's a Korean, a dwarf Korean lilac. This thing's super pretty. And this one's kind of more of a, a lighter lilac color, at least according to the pictures. And it's supposed to grow to be six, seven feet wide, six feet tall, just a nice big bush. And then we got another Korean lilac. And then we got this one. It is a rock and round pride and joy. And then on the back here, it says stone crop. So I don't know really what this is, but it is beautiful. So I got it. And this one, look at the, look at the leaves. They're just pretty all year round. 
if they keep their leaves. But this one is a Wygella Florida Variegata. This one is your typical lilac. It's like a pink kind of a, I don't know what you call that color. It's not, I don't know if it's here, it's not like lilac color. It's like a pink uh, magenta-ish kind of color but it's super pretty. So I'm definitely on the hunt for some more lilacs of different colors. So then we got some of the Javelin Fort Deep Purple Lavender. These things are beautiful. Then we have this uh, Staircase Red Lupine. Looks like it's supposed to have some really pretty flowers. I'm kind of excited about that one. And the leaves just look pretty as well. They're kind of tropically. So then we got a Red Hot Chili Pepper and two stevia plants because as you could see over there, uh, stevia is not working, but I wanna have some. So then we have a Virginia, I don't know, winter glut Virginia. I don't know how to pronounce plants and I'm not afraid to try. Over here, I ended up uh, up potting finally my chocolate mint that I bought specifically because the Stivers Homestead recommended it. And it's just been in its original, uh, like a gallon size pot since I bought it last year. I finally put it in a big old planter. So I'm excited. And so we got jalapeno. It says jalapeno, only just hot pepper. And then we got two, two of those. Where's the second one? Whatever. They got shifted around in transport. <laughs> And then I got one Bahoot Jalopia. And then Snackable Red. I think these are cherry bombs. I got two of those because I think my husband would really like them. And then there's an, oh, there's the other jalapeno. And then a Super Cayenne. Pretty excited about that one. And then we got some Sriracha Pepper. So Sriracha is coming. Coming to a YouTube channel near you. And then another Super Cayenne and another of the cherry bomb then oh those are also the the sriracha and then i got spaghetti squash because the slugs got all of my spaghetti squash and when i went to actually replant it i really i thought i had more but it turned out i have none <laughs> so i couldn't i was like oh well i guess i'm just not gonna have spaghetti squash this year until i found that and i picked it up so let's go ahead and I'm going to show you kind of what I'm going to do with these things. My plan for at least the lilacs is to put them in this space over here and get a few more also. It's not going to fill up, fill up the whole space. But a lot of the sun loving things I'm going to put over there because it gets, as you can see, it gets great morning sun. I think it'll do really well. And then once we trim out these trees, I think it'll do even better. Uh, but for now, it still gets plenty of morning sun. And at some point, I'm going to severely limit the girth of this rhododendron plant because I just I can't stand rhododendrons they're beautiful only when they're blooming and they bloom for like I don't know a week maybe two weeks and I know that they are our state flower which please reconsider but um I just they're pretty only when they bloom and it's not worth the amount of space that they take up I would much rather that be a lilac which yes I know also blooms for a short period of time but I like them so I want to get them that's the plan for the more sun loving bushy sun loving bushy plants and then i'm gonna i'm gonna get some deck flowers and we're gonna put them in here a lot of the flowers i just want to have a really pretty deck this year that's kind of my game i just really want to have a suit i'm realizing we're in the same shirt that i was wearing last year last week <laughs> and the hat too Woo, matching i do laundry my plan for this deck is to deck it out <laughs> uh, basically what i'm going to do with it is i have two really awesome things that are on the way on back order that my husband got for me for my birthday slash mother's day which the day that you guys see this is actually my birthday but and mother's day already passed so combined it but didn't combine it got two separate of the same things so worked out pretty well in that regard um, so that's coming and that's going to go on the deck and then we're just going to deck it out with a bunch of pots and I'm going to fill them up with beautiful flowers, some greens that we can just access really easily, herbs, stuff like that. So I'm pretty stoked about that. That's where some of these are going to go. The rest obviously are going on the long flower bed at the end there. So that's pretty exciting. And I'm probably even going to get some uh, plants that are going to kind of trail over. So it's going to be really pretty. I don't have a clue what I'm going to do. I don't have a clue how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to learn. I'm going to show you guys. So that's kind of the plan for this deck. It's going to be super pretty without shading too much. 
over here. I know I did a garden tour last week. I'm not ready to do another full garden tour. It's just gonna be boring and repetitive. But there are a couple of areas that really exploded and I wanna show you. Okay, so first off is this bed of uh, radishes, kale, doing fantastic. And I just had to show you these peas. I'm having a really hard time getting them up to the trellis. I've obviously put the trellis too high um, and it's too late, I think, to drop it down. But I might try dropping it down. I don't know. But anyways, the radishes are doing fantastic. I mean, look at these. These ones are the ones that we did multi-sown, uh, Charles Dowding style. And then these ones we planted, or we put the seeds in the ground at the same time that we transplanted these ones. So they're catching up. They're doing a pretty good job. So I had to show you this bed because it's doing so much better than it was last week. And I just loved it. This one's not doing quite as gangbusters, but you know, it's still doing pretty okay. And all of these ones we planted like in the ground the same day that we transplanted those also. We did all of this the same day. And, but we planted multi-sown. Like I didn't, like I planted it in the ground several. I'm trying an experiment, we'll see how it goes. But I mean, it should work, right? Like it's the same principle as what I did over there. It's just, I did it all in the ground. I didn't do it ahead of time, so we'll see. Beans on this side, doing great. Beans on this side have fallen victim to the slopes. And then lettuce over here, butter crunch, not butter crunch, oak leaf, just doing fantastic. The slugs don't seem to have any interest in it whatsoever. I don't know why, but I'm gonna go with it. And then see all of these were filled <laughs> with uh, lettuce. You can see I did it like every foot and the slugs just suck. So. It's getting some peppers up in here instead, I think. Let's see what I actually do. But anyways, and then over here, oh my gosh. This thing, that is just what the doctor ordered for these plants, was to take off that cloche, cover, whatever you want to call it, because they are exploding with growth. I mean, just look at these beautiful plants. Some of them are still snapped. I haven't gone through and cleaned them up yet and giving it to the chickens but that's on the list for today i'm gonna do some cleanup in here and it's just doing fantastic and then in here so these are all my melons well these are my cucumbers these are my melons i'm not sure what to do with these things if i should up pot them i know that I, they're kind of outgrowing these plant these particular pots Ooh, and ground cherries yay yum um but i'm not sure what to do with them because if i put them outside i'm terrified that the realistic reality is that they'll get eaten alive by slugs i don't want to do that to these because i have a limited number of seeds and i just i don't want to waste all my time so i might up pot them so that they can get a little bit stronger so the plan for today is to kind of get the new plants kind of settled on the deck there i'm not ready to actually transplant them just yet i want to do some more research and on each individual plant and figure out where to put them um, and how to best take care of them i don't want to jump the gun and throw everything in the ground and and just end up killing them all that would be terrible so and um I'm just gonna figure out where on the deck I'm gonna put them, that's it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kinda putter around and do some stuff and then I'll bring you back a little bit later and give you a quick idea of what I ended up doing. It's the next morning here and I tried to film a closing portion showing you kind of the things that I got done yesterday. I tried filming that last night and I just realized it was just way too dark. You could hardly see anything. So I figured I'd go ahead and show you in the bright morning sunshine. So here we go. So for, for the most part, all I did yesterday was transplant up, up pot and plant things. Like that was kind of pretty much the theme yesterday. Yeah. So what I ended up doing, I think I showed you, but planted this chocolate mint up potted it. We got, this one is a Zlati Lam uh, chamomile and a bode gold and then we have two containers of sage because they're just smaller and then this one is spearmint and we up potted five trays of melons and cucumbers and that's those two and those three right there and then just kind of move things around in general you can see i have a bit of a starting problem here got a lot and then Along the front portion of this bed, I planted 200 bush bean seeds. They are provider bush beans, and 
I basically, in between each tomato, I put a, like a great grid of like 12. Like three wide and then, or pardon me, four wide and two deep, three deep. Good grief, can't speak today. And then we also got a few more house plants when I went to the store. We got this uh, hypo, hypostis, hypostis. And then same thing, just a different color. Same thing, just a different color. <laughs> so I got three of those apparently. I didn't know they were all the same. And then uh, Pilea aluminum. I'm just really pretty. And then I got two of these hostas. These ones are shade loving, or well, part sun. And they were growing them in the shade loving plants section of Home Depot. And then we got these coleus. I got two of these. These are supposed to really love the shade. Oh, it says they're an annual, so they must reseed. I thought they were perennial. These ones are perennials. So we'll see how this one goes. If I have to collect seeds, I'll learn more a little bit more about it. But it's supposed to really love the seed, the shade. And I mean, look at those leaves, especially once they get bigger. Last thing here, I kind of ended up shifting around the herb garden a little bit. Not the herb garden, this is just where a lot of my herbs are. Um, I up-potted the rosemary finally into a bigger pot. It's been many, many years in that tiny little pot. So I finally got this big, giant, like, 20-gallon pot. Uh, just moved some of these around. And then I ended up... I thought this was, like, a weed, but I looked it up, and it's actually the hyssop. So I left those in there, planted a few more around it so to fill in the pot. Then these are yarrow that's coming back. I don't know if they... I'm pretty sure they just self-seeded. So I I have a bunch of yarrow in in my greenhouse. So I may end up kind of filling in the gaps if these don't start to take off very soon. But we'll see how it goes. And then I uh, filled in the gaps. I had some German chamomile growing back. Uh, but then there was nothing here. So I just filled in the gaps with some more starts. Planted some uh, white stars to your review. I was looking it up, how to grow it. I've never grown it before. And it says that it repels bees. They don't like the smell. So I put them back here where I don't need anything to germinate. Or to pollinate, sorry. And then I potted the valerian root. So it actually has room to grow. Well, it's a valerian plant. We, like, we would like to harvest the roots. So we gave it plenty of room for it to grow roots. I think, pretty sure that's just a taller version of a 20 gallon pot. Maybe it's a 15. Uh, not too incredibly sure. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some inspiration and just some ideas of things that you can get this time of year at the nursery and some things, just some stuff that's going on in the homestead, things we're planting, up potting, transplanting, all of those sorts of fun stuff. So I hope you enjoyed. If you do, please do give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. We'll see you next time. Bye.